Welcome to Men's Week. When are you going to do some content about the men? When are you going to do content for the men? Oh, you asked for it. You got it. Toyota. It's Men's Week. And in Men's Week, we do content strictly directed at the men, for the men, man stuff. Great holiday home fragrances, candles, you name it, we got it. Welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. My name is Kevin Samuels, your style godfather and guys in today's video I wanted to talk about some of this stuff right here. Great fragrances for your home. How to make your home smell incredible. If you like these kind of videos, cool, go ahead and subscribe, drop a like down below. Today I get to talk about a personal passion of mine. Having my house smell good. And today I'm going to go over some of my favorite fragrances for the holiday and the year around. I'm not going to belabor the point. I just want to get started. But I'm going to tell you this. Yes, it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. There's a difference between going to get those Glade plug-ins and those 99 cent Glade candles. Those are better than nothing. But guys, when it gets right down to it, I enjoy coming home smelling these things it just changes your entire mood just like you know there's a difference between quality fragrance good smelling juice there's a difference between quality candles and we're going to talk about some of my favorites right now first up from diptyque this one is called bay think of berries and roses bay is the probably the most popular selling candle on the planet but it comes in a room spray, which I like even better because I spray, you can spray this in the morning and it just lights up your entire space and it lasts longer for the same amount of money. This is a great pick me up. And I will tell you, man, when you invite the little sexy senorita back to your house and it's smelling good, she's automatically more comfortable. Guys, trust me. You can have so you can have your house smelling so good. Also from Diptyque, we have another. If I like bay in the morning, I like amber in the afternoon. You guys know I love rose, oud, and amber. And this is a nice, soothing amber fragrance that just smells sexy. This is a great way to smell it on date night. You want to Netflix and chill? What you want to Netflix and chill? Just <laughs> When you got this going on, guys, I'm telling you, fan freaking fantastic. You really can't go wrong from anything from Diptyque, but if I had to pick, I'd say Bay. I would say Amber. They also have another one for the holiday time of the year, Pine. It's Pine. It's as hard to get fragrance, and it smells like one of the most beautiful Christmas trees you ever. Just think about it. It just makes you happy. But that's one that I think you can use right around this time of the year in particular. Next up we have from the house of La Lobo. Come on, Suntal 26. It's the candle. You want to go to trendy boutiques, anywhere you're going to see uh, yuppies or Henry's or anything like this. This is an every hipster kind of little place, every hip bistro. This candle will always be burning over there. And guys, nothing smells quite like Suntal 26. And I like it that it comes in this rugged looking tin. You know, sometimes guys don't like this stuff. You're like, oh, it looks a little too, but this, you ain't got no problem. Just did it up. 40 hours. You light a candle, let it burn for a couple of hours. Make sure you just trim the wick, burn it for 20 minutes. Let your house smell good. Suntal 26. And I have another one called Lower 62. La Lobo calls this candle a hot mess. The, the number actually denotes the amount of ingredients in this. This thing has amber, sandal. I'm just telling you, this thing. <laughs> I have this in a room spray also. But Santal 26, Lauer 62, and I cannot wait to show you Cade. The Cade candle I have is specific to the hotel at Gramercy, Gramercy Park Hotel. It's harder to get. But that candle is like Santal 26 on steroids, smokier, deeper, richer, woodier. With a couple of room sprays, how many of you guys like Buy the Fireplace from Maison Marangella? Well, guess what? You can go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get Marshmallow Fireside, the room sprays, because they only come around in the fall and the winter. But my, my car smells like this. 
My bathroom smells like this. Like I said, it's by the fireplace. Now we're going to get into the house of Francis Kirkjohn. This is, what is this? Mo bon, look man, it's their holiday candle. Mo, Mon, Bo, something, whatever. This stuff smells like a rich Christmas. It smells like a rich person's house at Christmas time. That's what it really reminds me of. Also guys, I don't have it right here. It's on the way. Waco Rock Rouge 540, the candle. Oh yeah. Nest is going to be the easiest, most cost effective candle to get a hold of. This is sparkling cassis and this size is a votive. This size is a votive and it's great to throw in the bathroom. But Nest has something back here in the holiday package that I think is fantastic. I'm burning these all the time. Because I just like to have it smell good, guys. I could have made a video to go on and on forever, but I would tell you this. When your house smells good, when your place smells good, you are in a better mood. Laura 62, I love this one. I, I'm, I'm biased. Um, if you want something just to have, you can go to Bed Bath & Beyond, stock up on these. They run out after after uh, the fall and winter is over. These are gone, so you either get them now or you're done. I know people who actually wear this as a fragrance. They spray on their clothes instead of their actual... Um, do yourself a favor, trust me. Just go out and invest in one. Burn it, you use it. Make sure to trim the wick. Do me a favor, hit us up in the comment section. Let us know, or candles to burn in your home. Not the stuff you go to get at the Walmart, you know, aisle with the Clorox and all that other kind of stuff. The stuff that you actually will go drive. This is part of being a gentleman, having nice smelling house, nice smelling stuff. Get yourself together, smell good, for the holidays smell good year round. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share it out to anybody that you think can use the information. As usual, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until the next time, talk to you later. Godfather back in effect. Welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. My name is Kevin Sammies and today I give you my summertime designer list. This is gonna be a little bit crazy. If you like these kind of videos, cool. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Then turn on notifications to get our future video and live stream updates. Show your boy some love. We got going on today, black shirt, white belt, white kicks. Can't beat this look for summertime. In the summertime is fragrance season. It's the time of the year where you get to change your fragrance at least two or three times a day. Sometimes maybe as many as four. This is the chance to blow through a lot of your fragrance collection because when it's 90, 100, 100 plus outside, these fragrances cook off your skin really quick. In the summertime, especially in the morning and the early afternoon, I want fresh, bright, clean, sparkly. However, when it's 110 plus, there are some days where you don't even want to wear a fragrance. That's when it's time for a great signature scent. This is going to be my summertime designer list. You're going to see a pattern evolve here really quickly. I have my summertime daytime, my summertime evening time. Let's get started. Let's start off with a great one. Summertime daytime, Bleu de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Summertime evening, Bleu de Chanel Parfum. This is my signature cologne scent, especially if you're a guy over 30. If you're a guy over 30, you can't beat this one. If, I was, if I'm under 30, this would be Dior Sauvage EDT, and it'll be Dior Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Bottom line, both of these are just great, dumb reach fragrances when it's 90 plus outside. You really are like, I don't really know what I want to wear. Both of these fit the bill. Obviously, this is much better as the evening goes on, the sun tends to go down. This is much better out of the gate, especially bright, especially early in the morning. Both of these fragrances fit the bill for my summertime designer lineup. Next up from the Chanel Allure line, I have a Dichion Blanche for my daytime and Eau Extreme for the nighttime. Yes, this is my daytime, this is my evening. Why? Because as the sun goes down and you tend to go out, get ready to go partying, sitting on the balcony, patio somewhere, this is the thing that's gonna be able to cut through any environment. This is gonna be much better in the daytime before it gets to be really, really, really high heat and it plays especially well in office environments. That lemon meringue pie thing just captivates so many people. My daytime, my evening time, Allure Line winners. Next up from Hermes, we have Tether Hermes Eau Friche is my daytime, and Tether Hermes Eau de Toilette 
or Eau de Parfum is my nighttime. Both of these are killer summertime fragrances. This is probably one of the best summertime fragrances Dumb Reaches out there. That Eau Friche thing is in freaking incredible. That minty top note just can't be understated. The thing is, this thing burns off in about four hours. That's where this thing really tends to shine. And if you have this on already, even if it's kind of lingering around, I like the Eau de Parfum in general, but the Eau de Toilette and the summertime high heat just tends to cook a little bit better and work so much better as far as projecting and performing. Eau Friche for the day, EDT or EDP for night. You knew it had to be on the list, the best designer fragrance on the planet, period, and it's cool little brother. Aqua Di Show and Senza is my dumb reach for the daytime. I have the big bottle of this stuff because honestly, this is one I just wish more guys could get their hands on. Super incredible fragrance, especially for the daytime. Douse yourself in this stuff, guys. Women love it, guys love it, can't get enough of it. And when you get to the evening of this incense and patchouli, just is a killer. Super killer. Both of these fragrances are must-haves in my opinion. Great daytime, great evening, incredible overall. Aqua Di Gio and Senza or Profumo, both are straight up winners. I'm blowing through this list, but here's where we start to talk about the great things that I do with this list. Chanel Egoise, a great masculine spicy sandalwood fragrance. Signature scent worthy, works the entire year. Time for a great bit of a eau de parfum. Fits the same bill. Both of these are office friendly, masculine, super scent. Both are freaking phenomenal on their own, but in the summertime, I also like to blend, mix, and match. Let me show you what I'm talking about. One of my favorite blends with Tom Ford Grey Vetiver Eau de Parfum is Eccentric Molecule Eccentrico 2 and Joe Malone Red Roses. I put these on as base layers and I put this on on top and it provides a great signature blend. I know a lot of you guys don't have that one, but you know I love rose and I have to have a bright rose represented and I also have to have a more velvety rose. Jo Malone Red Rose is something I use to brighten up a lot of fragrances, a little floral kick to a lot of fra to fragrances out there that just need a little bit more sweetness in them and Eccentric Molecule O2, great base that makes the performance and projection even better. Love this combo. Ego East is a great sandalwood signature fragrance, and Molecule 04 is an underrated is an underrated sandalwood that is perfect for the summertime. This is great. As soon as you get up in the morning, spray yourself. It makes the house smell great. It makes everything smell great. This is something that's another dumb reach. White t-shirt approved, just douse, 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 spray, 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 and run out. And let it cook, and let it cook to perfection. And then when you decide you want to have a little bit more character, you can go ahead and throw Ego East on top of it, and just have this sandalwood blend with this, and make such a lovely combination. Mugler Cologne is always going to be a great dumb reach fragrance for the high, high heat, but it has tends to have performance issues. That's why I love my baby Molecule 01. This is a great, great fragrance in the high heat. You cannot overspray this thing. Great to wear by itself or great to blend with any of the fragrances I talked about, in particular ones that have more cedar, that have more cedar, more vetiver, more earthy notes. Molecule 01, Mugler Cologne, great blend for summertime, designer dumb reaches, just can't be. Let me go ahead and throw this rose in here too. I talked about red roses from Joe Malone for a brighter, more sparkling rose. This is Declaration Don Soir from Cartier is the rose I use when I want to mellow things out. Give it a more velvety vibe. Great for date nights, close encounters, or special occasions. And last but not least, I had to put this one on the list. If you notice, there's not a lot of sweet fragrances on this list because summertime, you don't want to really become overly cloying. That's why sandalwood is so great. Sandalwood is great because it's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. This one by Hermes, Lombre, whatever, this joint right here, this joint right here, Oh my God. A lot of times people like to rock this in the fall or the winter, but I'm gonna tell you, with 80 plus degree days on this on my skin is heavenly. Shout out to Frag Boy Stewie. I know he wears this one also. Guys, do yourself a favor. Make sure you pick this one up if you like sweeter fragrances. You wanna look for something that's gonna give you a sweet vibe in the summertime because you don't wanna always be smelling like sparkling, bright, fresh soap. You want sometimes to have some sexiness going on. And if you wanna have sexiness, Molecule O2. Amber Roxon has been involved in a lot of some of the best fragrances out there on the market today. This is, a, this is what gives Dior survival is lasting power. I also think of fragrances like Popeye or Superman or Freeze. This is in Amberoxin is listed as the key component. And Amberoxin goes so well with anything with ambergris or amber like this one.
So that's it guys, those are the fragrances I'll be mixing, matching, blending. That's my designer list with a little bit of a twist. However, I always say don't just leave it up to me, hit us up in the comment section. Let us know what are you going to be rocking as far as designer fragrances for this summer. Remember, this is a great time of the year to blast through a lot of your fragrances. I change my fragrance at least two to four times a day in the summertime. Morning, mid-afternoon, afternoon, evening. I take at least two, sometimes three showers a day, so it's always a good time to switch things up. Try some things, do some blends. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up and share it out to anybody that you think can use the information. Thank you again so much for watching and subscribing. Till the next time, talk at you later. By the way, you want to stay connected? Follow me on social media. Links will be down in the description. Peace, two fingers, and I'm out. It's your boy. Summer, summer, summer time. Smell good. Five basic shoes that any guy needs for his wardrobe. Welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. My name is Kevin Samuels, your style godfather. And guys, in today's video, I give you a must, a simple must. Five shoes that every guy needs in his wardrobe, regardless of style personality. You're gonna to wanna to take notes for this one. If you like this kind of video, cool, go ahead and subscribe, and drop a like down below. Shout out to the CIA. What's going on, gentlemen? Guys, if you've been watching my channel, any length of time. You know I talk about fit over fashion, quality over quantity, and I talk about the three Fs, frames, fragrance, and footwear. But there is one individual item that is a must when any guy is starting to put together any kind of outfit. It all starts with the shoes. You get the shoes right, you're on the right track. However, you get the shoes wrong and you can have a $10,000 bespoke suit and look like trash can sauce. Guys, I see it each and every week. I can see a guy that is immaculately dressed. And then I look down at his shoes and I'm like, oh, oh man, come on. That's what you decided to put on your feet? You got this dope fit on and you walking around with these busted shoes on. But don't worry guys. I got you covered. Let me give you the five basic shoes that any man needs, regardless of his style, personality, age, season, reason, climate, whatever. Let's get started. Shout out to the CIA, one love FBI. If you wanna become part of the movement, make sure you join me on Patreon for exclusive video and live stream content. Join me on that platform for things you will only see there. Details down in the description. A simple pair of black lace-ups, commonly called Oxford, is a staple in a classic masculine wardrobe. For my style personality, I prefer whole cut, but you can go ahead and get cap toe. Cap toe or whole cut, those are the only two options. Do not get things with medallions or broken or anything like that on your basic Oxford. These are the shoes you're gonna wear on that interview. These are the shoes you're gonna wear into that boardroom. You can wear these shoes all the way up to and including a tuxedo. Like I said, they're the workhorse foundation of your wardrobe. Get quality footwear. Number two, we have a great pair of single monk or double monk strap shoes. Now guys, here is where I wanna tell you to not always go to black. Guys, black is a great color and most guys wanna to go to black automatically. But I need you to remember that black is more of a dramatic color. When you start getting into the other shoes, you wanna start looking at different shades of brown. This is a nice mid brown with some burnishing on the toe. I chose a nice single monk strap, but it could have been single or double monk. I recommend focusing on browns in your monk straps because they add a tremendous depth to your wardrobe. You can wear these all the way up to level two dress. That means you can wear these with a suit, but not in classic business or boardroom kind of environments. These can be worn with jeans, slacks, chinos, opens up your wardrobe so much. Guys, trust me, the monk straps have the benefit of being a dress shoe, but they also have the benefit of being kind of cool, kind of sexy, and making you look so much different than any other guy on the street. Next up, we have a simple loafer. Now this is my loafer, but yours will vary. A loafer will either be penny, bit, or tassel. Most guys will use a bit or a penny. Tassels depend upon your style personality, but at the end of the day, loafers are something that you just slide your foot into. You can wear them with socks or with no-show socks. And yes, you can also rock and wear loafers with a suit. 
However, most guys prefer to have lace-ups on with the suit because it makes you feel a little bit more snug. And depending upon your style personality or the environment you work in, people can kind of tend to look down on loafers because they look a little bit too informal. But when you wear them with a pair of jeans or a great pair of trousers, they open up your wardrobe immensely. Now with monk straps and your loafers, this is the place where you can also take chances with different colors. Grays, blues, green, burgundy, kind of octobud. So many different ways you could go there in addition to all different shades of brown. Next up, we have the simple all-purpose white sneaker. Yep, guys, the simple white sneaker will always be a staple in a man's wardrobe. Now, depending upon your style personality will depend on what kind of sneaker you get, but you can't go wrong with the simple, high quality leather with a nice, solid sole. I prefer you to get a sole that would stand up to an industrial strict nail or tack. Guys, the worst thing to do is be walking around in some sneakers and you're looking a little bit more casual and you step on something and it pierce that sole. I know a lot of guys look at this particular style and think, oh, I can just give me some Stan Smiths, but guys, remember, quality says a lot. Get a high quality pair of all white sneakers, especially if you plan on trying to dress it up. And last, but certainly not least, the boot, the Chelsea boot. A simple, sleek Chelsea boot is incredible for any man of any style personality. Chelsea boots do many things for guys. First off, it's fashion forward. It makes you look sleek, modern, while still making you look masculine and rugged. If you're on the shorter side, it can add one or two inches to your height. Also because of the design, it actually is a little bit more snug on your ankle to make you kind of feel more held in. And as we transition into the fall and the winter time, it also adds additional warmth. Guys, I'll be honest, you know me, I am wearing boots most of the time, even at my height, because I simply love boots. Now, yes, a simple black pair of Chelsea's is a must have for, I want to say, almost any guy. Then after you get that, do not be afraid to go out and get a nice lace up dress boot or a chucka boot. Also, as we transition into the fall and the winter, suede is going to make a huge impact into a boot wardrobe. Again, I just wanted to give you the five basic shoes you need. Now, going forward from these five shoes, everything else is basically a lifestyle choice, a style choice. What colors you get, what materials you get, things like that are up to you. But these are the basic five shoes that any guy will need in his wardrobe, no matter what season, no matter what reason, no matter what age, no matter what climate. Nail these five and you are golden. If you like this kind of video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and share it out to somebody that you think can use the information. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Until the next time, talk at you later. Godfather, out. Oh. Welcome to the channel where fashion meets fragrance. My name is Kevin Samuel, your style godfather. And guys, in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of the three Fs, frames, and how to improve any of your summertime game. If you like these videos, cool, go ahead and subscribe, drop a like down below. Shout out to the CIA. What's going on, you modern, sexy savages? Guys, what are the three Fs? Frames, fragrance, and footwear. And yes, in spring and summertime when the sun is out, it is a great time to rock great killer frames. Sunglasses are the easiest way from any guy to go from here to cool, just, just like that. Whether you're suited and booted or you're just in a white t-shirt and jeans, putting on a great pair of sunglasses can change your look. Guys, you know your godfather always says, do not skimp on what you put on your face. I know, I know there are gonna be some of you younger guys out there that are gonna be like, hey godfather, I'm not quite there yet, so what do I do? And I get it guys, you may not be there, but you need to know where you need to get to. At the end of the day, when it comes down to great frames, a great pair of aviators look good on anybody. And the question is whether you want to go acetate or metal. Let's take something like this. This is a great pair of frames from my favorite maker, Jacques Marie Bonge. This is a great acetate look that can dress down or dress up. Acetate, in my opinion, looks great as an optical and a much more casual sunglass. This is one of the few pairs of acetate frames that you could actually dress up. This is the Felsen and the colorway is noir. However, when you want to be dressed business appropriate, looking good in a suit, a jacket, a button up, you want to make sure you go over to Metal Eyewear. As I have a lot of frames, but I'm gonna show you some of my favorite newer pickups for this summer. Let's get into it. First up, these from Dita right here. These are called the System One. 
Robert Downey Jr.'s iconic eyewear, when you see him in the Avengers and Iron Man, he's often rocking Dita. This is a System 1 in matte, in matte black with rose gold. Looks good with looks good in dark, looks good with dark colors or rose gold. The thing I love about this frame is that top bar. Top bars are making a huge comeback and they give you something else to grab your frames, not just the sides. And with the and with the detailing with the rose gold out there, it these are great. These are really good as a nice sunglass on a day when the sun is really high because it provides a lot of protection. These are frames that obviously really should not wear indoors. If you want to wear something outdoors and indoors, let's check something like this out. Oh yeah. Guys, I love this. This is an Adidas Flight 007. Yes, James Bond 007. In a gold colorway with a nice brown lens that is good for indoors or outdoors. And even better guys, these are incredibly light to wear on my face. When it's really warm outside, they feel like you're almost wearing nothing. Guys, I get so much use out of this particular frame right here. Gold is making a real comeback and these are incredible. Now, I know some guys say, well, do you have to match your metals? And with frames, you really don't, unless you choose to. Meaning, if you got on silver jewelry, can you wear gold frames? Of course. But it's always better to have more options than less. Since we said silver, let's get into the next one. Whew, love those. Oh yeah, Jacques Marie Maj does things right. And this frame right here is called the Solar Silver Fox. A nice silver matte look with a nice rose tint. Guys, it is hard to look bad in a frame that looks this good. Just look at the details. I'm gonna tell you right now, this particular frame comes in three different colorways and I like all of them. I don't think any guy could go wrong with this particular frame. So I'll leave a link down in the description where you decide to go with the gold, where you decide to go with the silver fox, or where you decide to go white gold look. They're all incredible. Next, let's go to the Jacques Marie Mars GT. Boom. Well, now you can see the other one, what's more a rounder, a little bit more casual look. This one is straight up sophisticated elegance. This looks great in a suit or when you're dressed up. These are incredible. They have that classic throwback feel that will look good in any decade, any season, any reason. These right here stand the test of time because of that timeless style. Man, I love these. Oh, man, I love these. The last, but certainly not least, Guys, it's hard to go wrong with something from Cartier. Oh, yeah. From Cartier, it's actually a limited edition frame. It's silver with leather wrap. It's called the Cartier Must. Cartier is not for the faint of heart. I'm gonna tell you right there. They're like chrome hearts or anything like that. They're on the upper end of luxury, but guys, all you need is one great pair. And the great thing about Cartier is you can customize them. You can actually change the lenses out, change the metal wear out. You can actually get whatever you want etched in there, your initials or whatever. Cartier Chrome Hearts are the next step up. And here's the thing, they're not for young guys. These are for the grown damn men out there who are working, who want to treat themselves as something really special. I'm gonna tell you, probably one of my favorite frames to wear because the light blue lens can be worn indoor and outdoor. So gentlemen, when it comes right down to it, I'm always gonna tell you, in frames, in my opinion, are investment level items. Shoes are investment level items, frames are investment level items. Don't skimp on your frames. I know the temptation is to say, hey man, this pair of $80 Ray-Bans look just like that, but no, they are not. You will know the difference when you put them on your face. Well, I don't want to spend the money. What if I lose my break? What if I lose them or drop them off? But hey man, we're grown men over here. I expect you to be able to take care of the things that you have. I mean, you don't use that when you're driving a car, do you? I mean, you don't drive a hoopty because you might get into an accident. Don't use those excuses when you're talking about something you're gonna have on your face. When people are talking to you, they're looking at your face 80% of the time. Makes you love what you have on your face. Again, frames, fragrance, and footwear, three ways to make any guy stand out and go from here to here just like that. 
do me a favor, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what are some of your favorite frames to rock and wear. What look good indoors? What look good outdoors? What makes you stand apart from the crowd? Inquiring minds would like to know. Your Godfather is out. Gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Kevin Samuels. In today's video, we talk about the most masculine thing that any man can wear. As an image consultant, I often get asked some of the same questions. What are the basic shoes a man should have or basic eyeglasses a man could have? What are some basic things a man should have in his wardrobe? The most important this, the most, the most important that. Fit over fashion, quality over quantity, all these things. More than anything, I get asked, what is the one thing that actually helps men stand apart from the crowd? That actually makes me physically look like a man that should have some respect. And there is one item that has been universally approved, universally voted on without, without question that helps men stand out from the crowd. One item that actually makes you look like a masculine man, and it is... Go out to your local mall on any given Saturday and you will see little boys, teenage boys, little girls, teenage girls, and women dressed just like this. Jeans, t-shirt. Maybe some form of hoodie, pullover, maybe some form of sweatpants. Dressing like this as a man gives you no masculine advantage. It throws you right there amongst the crowd. I mean, you could have graphic t-shirt, you could have Gucci on it, you could have whatever you want on this shirt, but it's still a t-shirt. You can have whatever kind of jeans you want, but they're still jeans. Like I said before, this does not do you any good. What does you some good? Check it out, the suit. Now look, you don't have to like it, but understand something. Go out to your local mall on any weekend and you will see little girl and you will see little girls, teenage girls and women, little boys, teenage boys and young men all dressed in some version of jeans, t-shirt, some sort of jogger, some sort of hoodie. All these different combinations, but boys and girls, young men and young women dressed alike. But when you're like myself, I wear a suit 90% of the time. I'm automatically separated from all that and other guys, and I look more masculine because it is a uniform of power, respectability, and other things. You don't have to like it, but that's the way it goes. Let's take the converse. Imagine if you went out and you saw a woman in a suit, whether she had a tie on or not, something automatically looks off. Imagine if you saw a little boy in a suit, whether he had on a tie on or not, something looks off. The suit is the most masculine thing any guy can wear. If that's the case, why is there so much pushback? Well, because today there's been such a focus on streetwear and comfort. But I will tell you this, men dress for outcome and respect. We don't dress for comfort. We dress to get stuff done. And when you wanna get stuff done, a suit puts you in that position. There is no arguing this point. It's not open for discussion. It is a uniform of masculinity. Let's get to that next point. There are gonna be some guys, there are gonna be some people in the comments section that say, well, you could wear a uniform, policeman, firefighter, military. No, you can't. Because those professions have women in them that wear the same thing. A female police officer and a male police officer are still wearing a uniform but you put that man in a suit, that woman is not going to be in a suit. Guys, when it gets right down to it, the most masculine thing any man can wear is the suit. That's why I love my hashtag Suit Saturdays. Suit Saturdays is something I came up with years ago. Tell guys, hey, on Saturday, don't go in your closet and throw on jeans and t-shirt. Go in there and put on your suit and just go out and live your life. Go run your errands, go to the mall, get out and socialize and move around people and watch how differently you get treated. Guys, beyond a shadow of a doubt, every guy has come back to me and said, you know what? I've noticed a massive difference how people treat me when I'm dressed like a masculine man versus a little girl. I didn't make the rules, guys. I just tell you what they are. Do me a favor, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know, are you gonna start rocking and wearing a suit, looking more like a masculine man what are you gonna do to actually improve your image this year going forward? If you like this video, go ahead and share it out to somebody that you think can use the information. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Till next time, talk at you later. Godfather, out. This is an empty bottle of Eccentric Molecule Molecule 01, and that's a shame.
because this is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. Why? I'm going to tell you in a second. Whether you're just now starting out in the fragrance or you've been collecting fragrances for a while, you all probably want to have something that smells uniquely you. It doesn't smell like anybody else. You're looking for that perfect scent. I mean, it's like the holy grail. We're all trying to find it. Guess what? It's already here. It's called ISO E. Now, if you're not a frag head, don't worry about it's it. It's the one thing that's in the DNA of most fragrances. And it's the one thing that smells uniquely different on each and every person. That is why if I only had one fragrance to wear for the rest of my life, they just strip me down, I could only have one, it would be that. It smells uniquely different on each and every person. And it does something else. It actually, when I blend it with other fragrances, it actually extends the life and projection. Yes. So I get a holy grail kind of fragrance and I can use it with things like Oud Wood or Bleecker Street or any other fragrance that you love the scent of but it just doesn't last long. Mugler Cologne, I use it with that to just extend the life. It is an incredible fragrance and oh my God, it smells so good on every person I put it on. The, now, Die Hard Fragrance people, if you down on it, just don't hit me up in the comment section because we're different than everybody else. We're snobs, but most people smell this and they're like, what are you wearing? I can honestly tell you, I know people who have extremely sensitive noses. You know that even bloodhounds would be shocked at how sensitive their noses are. And so they hate all fragrances, especially when she was pregnant. She even loved this fragrance. So that said something to me. And the fact that I can use to blend with other things, ladies, it does something incredible on your skin. Every woman has their own scent and it just magnifies it. I have never smelled this fragrance on anyone that it smelled bad on. Never. It is a fragrance that isn't a fragrance. Do yourself a favor. Whether Don't listen to the marketing. I don't work for the company, but I will tell you this. When I finally smelled this fragrance, I was like, oh my goodness, this is it. I can stop. I can actually stop the fragrance hobby right now and just use this. I won't, but I could. That's how strongly I feel about this fragrance. I've heard other people review it. Uh, some people oh, you think it's meh. Nah. Some people are like meh. Nah. But you know, honestly, I have to admit, in the fragrance community, we get so daggum uppity and deaf about this stuff, man. Most people just want it. Does it smell good? Is it going to make me attractive? Is it going to make me a hit with the guys, a hit with the ladies? Is it going to be unique? That's what everybody else cares about. Nobody else wants an essay on what the fragrance is. I mean, if you do, I can do that for you. But do you really care? I mean, at the end of the day, when you're walking down the street or you walk in the building, all that stuff, does it really matter if it was, you know, it was farted out by unicorns? and put together by leprechauns and fairies, made by the most unique stuff since, you know, rock dust for Mars? Or does it matter that it just smells incredible? That's all that matters, then you will like this. So do yourself a favor. Don't even sample it, blind buy it. Because sampling it doesn't do it justice. Get out there, blind buy it. Till the next time, talk at you later. I appreciate everybody showing up. But uh, that's what we got to do. Until the next time, we got to do what we got to do. Peace. We're gone.
Link for the self awareness assessment will be down in the description. If you're watching for the video releasing, I'm a PhD. Nothing can stop me. I'm a. Cause I'm addicted to what you and I realize. PH. I rebuke. Black women are not our enemies. Peace out. We're gone.